Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, jury members, Director General Stefano Mansavisi, European Commissioner Nevin Mimitsa, a very, very warm welcome to you all. I'm having to do this because you are scattered here and there. A welcome to those of you joining us here at Tour and Taxi, and of course to those of you joining us at home from the comfort of your homes and your offices and your gardens. My name is Katrina Sickle, and I am delighted and genuinely very, very privileged to be your presenter this evening. It's the 2017 edition of the Lorenzo Natali Media Prize. First things first, are your phones on silent? If you leave them on, please tweet winners, awards. They're an easy, simple way to get good messages out there. So that's the deal. You leave them on, you can't switch them off. It feels like cutting off a limb, you tweet, okay? Second, headsets. There is interpretation today into and out of French and English, so you should be sorted. And there is also interpretation from Spanish into English, so make sure you're set up. And I know that there will be some speakers tonight in French. Thirdly, we are being web streamed. You've gathered that. So for those of you who come up here, please look engaged and energetic. You do not want people at home to be pointing at you on the screen saying, who's that grumpy bugger, okay? So those are the rules. I'm very bossy. You will see that throughout the ceremony. Now, this is not the first time that I have been asked to pre present the Lorenzo Natali Media Prize, and I'm genuinely grateful to have been asked back by the Commission to present this year's edition. So it's actually the third time. There was quite a large gap between the first and the second time. This really wonderful, and I really underline that word, wonderful award was launched by the Directorate General for International Cooperation and Development back in 1992. In fact, it was just a couple of years after the death of Lorenzo Natali. How many of you knew that? People in the commission, you have to, you know, very subtle raise of the hand there, okay. For who knows who Lorenzo Natali is? That's another question. Come on. Okay, more very dis... Okay, so, well, for those who don't, he was an Italian politician, he was vice president of the commission, he was very, very active at the commission during the 70s and the 80s in a number of different posts, including that of Commissioner for Cooperation and Development under Jacques Delors. And it was in this portfolio that he established a really, really broad network of relations with the governments and the leaders of African, Caribbean and Pacific countries, hence the award being established in his name. So, you will have had your heads in the sand if you don't know what it's for. It's awarded to journalists for outstanding reporting on development and poverty eradication, on democracy and human rights. Now, overarching all of those themes, of course, is freedom of expression. And the prize really does recognize the very bold and the very courageous efforts of journalists around the world that defend it. Now, it doesn't need me at all here to tell you how very, very important that is in the climate in which we live, not least following the terrible events of recent weeks and months, both in my home country and, in fact, in my home city of London and in other cities around the world. I don't want to bring a somber tone to the proceedings before we've started. We are here truly to celebrate. But I just wanted to emphasize how very fitting it is to be celebrating at this particular moment in history, freedom of expression. And it's very fitting to be doing so too for the first time within the wider context of European Development Days, which this year is in its 11th edition. Now, last year, the Lorenzo Natali Media Prize increased in scope and it welcomed submissions from both professional and amateur journalists, as it does again this year. And this year too, we have another development in the form of a special prize. 
But I'm not going to spill the beans on that. I'm going to leave that to the Director General of DG Devco, Stefano Mansovisi. It is your turn. I would like to invite you, please, to officially open this evening's ceremony. Welcome, sir. A warm round of applause, please. <laughs> nice to see you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much uh, uh, for being here. Winners, jury members, and welcome to this Lorenzo Natali Prize 17. I have to say that it's a particular pleasure. I've been uh, serving under Lorenzo Natali as a commissioner. Therefore, I remember him also. And I remember his dedication, his personal touch that he had uh, to, the, to development work, with the presence on the field, with the passion, with a lot of, uh, let's say, testimony. And I think that uh, is, uh, this prize is, uh, is really rewarding his memory and his, his commitment. Uh, I think uh, that uh, the best way to do it is precisely to carry on uh, this idea, which was very much linked uh, to his experience, but very much linked to the very work of the European Union, of the European Commission, to uh, uh, envisage, to, to, to support what are the effort to promote human rights, freedom of expression, and this year also freedom of religion and belief. I think that is a, is a sort of logical um, in development of this. We are here to celebrate some of the best amateur and professional journalists committed to shining the light on issues which are related to development, poverty, eradication, seen in particular from this point of view of freedom of expression. I think that uh, uh, this uh, is representing in this year in particular, in this moment when we adopted this morning the new consensus for development, even more a contribution to a global message not just the old way of doing, which was very much based on a donor and beneficiary relations, but, but truly even more than in the past, a sort of example of partnership, example of doing together, example of sharing. Because after all, telling a story is sharing experience, is sharing a personal view of things, is sharing you know, a vision. And I think that in these days when, uh, allow me to say, in spite of the hashtag, you know, that uh, stories are told uh, maybe in few words, I think to take a bit more time and to listen to those which have written not long books, uh, but the essential in order to pass knowledge, emotion, and, uh, and uh, way of looking at the reality, I think is, is particularly important. On a daily basis, thousands of people around the world risk their life to bring us to stories, this story that matters the most, the story of human struggle and triumph. They go to incredible length to provide their audience with eye-opening witness accounts and the true taste of the life on the ground for many of the world's most vulnerable people. They contributing in uncovering important issues, bring them to the attention of the public and politicians alike. It's therefore a contribution to awareness raising, a contribution uh, to, do, to participate, to be protagonists, to take uh, our own destiny in our life. And they give also a voice to those which find it difficult or impossible to make themselves heard. I think that this is the essence of this message, this is the essence of this, uh, of this prize. And I think that the reason why the hashtag is tell my story. I think that this is precisely what we are trying to do, to perpetuate this, to share, to pass from each other, to encourage people to talk to each other and to, and to share and to sit together maybe to have a drink together, to stay together. This is, I think, the very essence of also our way of doing things uh, in the European Union. Sometimes this story is not easy, uh, a story which can scare, a story which can uh, create embarrassment, stories which are not necessarily sweet, can be bitter, can be tough, but I think that this is precisely the differences which shows at the same time the personality and uh, the ability of the creator to reinterpret it. These are not necessarily a picture. They are transmitting by the one writing this, also a vision. But they represent also, let's say, a way of uh, testimony, uh, you know, that uh, only with an objective and free eye on the reality, on things that happen, you can contribute to a better knowledge, to a better world. Now, those of tonight represent the very best of uh, uh, more than 500 entries from every corner of the globe. Therefore, from the original uh, I mean, setting which was very much limited to the ACP, now they are much wider, from print, online, video, and audio media, both professional and amateur journalists. 
as I said before. We also include, and I'm very happy to have here Jan Fiegel, the special, special envoy for uh, freedom of religion and belief. We also enlarge of this. It's, a, uh, it's another issue in which I think uh, to share stories is also helping in uh, understanding the reality in which we are living. But in this context, I would like uh, to give a special thanks to the University, Universitat Pompeo Faber, Barcelona, the Institut Pratique de Journalisme Paris Dauphine, and the European Journalist Training Association for the difficult task of putting together the shortlist. And also a special thanks uh, to our independent panel of experts who made their selection on the basis of quality, originality, and relevance. As it has been said, this is the first time that this happened Mm, the, 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 this, this prize is, uh, is uh, celebrated during the European Development Days. I think it's also a way to give them a bit more visibility. Uh, you know, in the moment when the Development Days are gathering together more than, at, at least now, 7,000 people from all around Europe and from all around the world. I think it's a way also in this day in which the new European consensus has been adopted by the only institution but more important, I hope, by more, all people, you know, in order to connect also this prize with this new context of development, which is very much about freedom, not only about uh, fight against poverty. Fight against poverty without freedom, in reality, is not a complete goal. And therefore, we have to celebrate and to connect this, more freedom of expression, more chance to fight and to eradicate poverty. And thank you very much. For this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, um, I absolutely endorse your words, which you said, uh, storytelling, sharing stories, and uh, is the very essence of who we are. I'm a real Luddite, okay? I'm not the queen of the gifts and the pictograms and the this and the that. Give me a good story or give me a good night out with friends where we swap and have conversations. So I'm, I'm particularly always delighted to be, uh, to, be, to be presenting these awards for that very reason. So, can I just uh, follow up with a couple of facts and figures this year's edition um, before we celebrate our winners? I know we're, we're all on the edge of our seats and also find out who is going to take home the grand prize. That is a big secret, okay? Uh, entries have to have been published in one of five regions that we know. Africa, the Arab world and the Middle East, Asia and the Pacific, Europe, Latin America and the Caribbean. So those are the regional categories that we will go through this evening. Um, and as you may have grasped from the opening video, printed and online articles, and that includes blogs and audiovisual material, visual or um, just audio material, were all welcome. And we did have, we, we had all sorts actually in, 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 uh, in the winning submissions just to reflect the different ways that journalists today capture information and tell their stories. Now, the common denominator is always the subjects, uh, development, uh, poverty eradication in, in the developing world, and as the Director General has just said, freedom of religion or belief outside the European Union, and we're very privileged to have uh, to meet Jan Figel a little bit later, who'll tell us about, uh, a bit more about that. Uh, as you heard, 500 entries um, were received. That was impressive, actually, because the submission period was ridiculously short. I think the organizers of the competition were running around like headless chickens most of the time. There was a hell of a lot going on in a very, very short time. And that went through a pre-selection phase with the journalism schools, and the best pieces were given to an independent grand jury. I love saying that, an independent grand jury made up of seven men and women, more women than men, actually. I think the men were outnumbered for once. UP, with very big brains, very diverse expertise in all of the award themes. They acquitted themselves admirably. They had to, I think, evaluated 40 submissions, is that right? 40? Um, but rigorously, in order to select tonight's winners. And in just a moment, actually, I think we've got a video of the jury in action uh, when they were deliberating on the 8th of May in Brussels. Let's see, Let's see them in action now. My name is Nazila Ghane. I teach international human rights law at the University of Oxford. Today was the first time that I was on the jury of this prize. I uh, enjoyed meeting the colleagues and um, dealing with these issues. There were three categories that we were um, assessing submissions for, development, poverty, and especially for this year, freedom of religion or belief. Freedom of religion or belief is a very interesting human right. It has an individual dimension, the need for each and all to be able to follow their conscience. But also it requires a community investment to create an environment where each and all can flourish. 
Hi, my name is Alana Rizzo. I'm a journalist from Brazil and I'm part of the jury of the Lorenzo Natali Media Prize. What got my attention this year was the stories about uh, gender equality. This is a subject that is really important for me and we can see how journalists can help empowering women all over the world. Boa sorte a todos os finalistas e parabéns a todos os vencedores. And now let's just take a moment to big up. I always I always do this and I think they hate me for it, but I'm going to do it. Let's big up our very hard working jury in person, please, because some of them are here this evening on the front row going, don't make me stand up. But please rise. We have Sanitsuda Ekachai, please, columnist and former editorial pages editor, Bangkok Post. We've got Nazila Ganea, who you saw in the video. Stay standing, you can may stay standing. Associate Professor of International Human Rights Law at Oxford University. Richard Jones, Partnerships Editor at DevEx. Alana Rizzo, Board Member of the Brazilian Association of Investigative Journalism. We've got Julie Mayetzak, who's not here, uh, from Reporters Without Borders, Ines Pohl from Deutsche Welle. And we've also got Sibella Wilkes from UNHCR. So another clapping, please. So, they were probably, you know, sitting long into the night with their gins and tonics until three or four in the morning, at least I know Richard was, because I know him. So, to make what were very difficult decisions, they had to take into account some really diverse criteria. The Director General did touch on them, relevance to the theme, that was just one thing, accuracy, balance of opinion, investigative depth, originality and novelty, that played a, a really strong part, number of sources, and of course the conditions under which the piece was created and much more. And apart from the kudos of taking home a classy trophy, you can see them there, they also, each person gets 5,000 euros and it, there is an additional 5,000 euros for the winner of the grand prize. So, that is the finer details out of the way. There's going to be a little bit of coming and going. I have already slightly terrified, I think, the winners to tell them when they have to come and go, what they have to do and exactly how long they may speak for. But we will basically follow the same thing. We're going to go category by category, first amateur, then professional. Before we actually have them come on stage, we're going to have a video of them speaking. It's a bit of a funny way to do things, but we sort of see them on screen and then we get to clap them in person, okay? So, my lovely winners, don't come racing up here or I shall literally throw you off the stairs until that video is finished. So, first up, Africa. Now, this regional category did draw the most entries overall. I think it was nearly 33%, a total of 164. And to hand out the trophies, where is our first lovely jury member, Sanitsuda Ekachai of the Bangkok Post? A warm round of applause, please, for this lady. <laughs> Come here. And you need to stand on my left. That's okay. It's all very delightfully orchestrated. Now, I'm not going to hand over the envelope quite yet. Come, please, here, because this doesn't have such a wide reach. I'm just going to ask you, um, tell the audience, actually, rather than me, a little bit about um, the uh, amateur entries for this region and a little bit about why the winning piece stood out. But don't say who the winner is yet, please. Uh, all our finalists um, touch on very important development issues, such as... Uh, the role of women, the environment, renewable uh, energy, uh, the children's life and education opportunities. Uh, it was a very difficult situation, decision for us uh, in both categories. Um, uh, so we based on the criteria, we, uh, we chose our winners uh, according to relevance, originality, depth, and uh, how engaging the stories are. And uh, about a uh, winner in the amateur category, the story um, doesn't only limit it to the writer's uh, country, but it talks to the rest of, uh, of the world where, where, where um, the problem about renewable energy is not technological, but political. So uh, I think this uh, aspect uh, that um, makes us choose. It really yeah. resonated. Yeah, okay. what, um, it was quite broad in scope. Yeah. Okay, so da -da 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 -da, we don't have a drum roll. I could do it, but I won't. But I will hand you the envelope. Okay. It's for you to please announce the winner of the Africa region, the amateur journalist. And the winner is... And the winner is Mr. Martin Kaba. Well done! <laughs> Can we launch the video, please? <laughs> Thank you. 
soit euh, le thème euh, que j'aborde dans mes productions, je me fixe toujours pour objectif, pour objectif que euh, la population puisse comprendre qu'il y a quelque chose proche d'elle qu'elle ne sait pas. En participant à ce prix, euh, je sais que le monde entier peut écouter en fait, ma production. L'énergie solaire, c'est une énergie d'avenir en Afrique. Et il était important pour moi de faire passer le message euh, partout dans le monde, pour que euh, les populations puissent comprendre, pour que les dirigeants puissent comprendre que l'énergie solaire est une énergie incontournable dans le futur. Welcome, Martin. That's for you. Okay. Viens, 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 venez, venez, venez. Vous êtes le bienvenu, vous êtes le premier, c'est euh, un peu comme ça, on fait les photos. Vous devez applaudir, désolé, mais c'est comme ça. C'est comme ça. Je vais juste vérifier le... c'est qui l'officier. Ah, il est là. Tu es content, monsieur Ça va Ok. Martin, vous pouvez être là, just a moment. Viens avec moi, s'il vous plaît. Vous voulez dire quelques mots à notre... Audience, je vais faire ça un tout petit peu pour qu'on puisse écouter. Je voudrais dire merci à la Commission de l'Union européenne. Je voudrais dire merci au Burkina Faso. Je voudrais dire merci à toute l'Afrique. Euh, si j'ai un mot à l'endroit des dirigeants africains, c'est que l'énergie euh, renouvelable est une énergie incontournable. Euh, dans le siècle actuel, c'est une énergie d'avenir. Euh, à l'endroit des dirigeants burkinabés, euh, c'est de se tourner surtout auprès de l'énergie solaire. C'est, comme je l'ai dit, une énergie renouvelable et une énergie d'avenir. Merci. Monsieur, vous pouvez juste changer de place et je vous invite, vous pouvez rester là un moment. Uh, yes, your work is not done. Don't look. You think you're going to sit back in your seat. It's so not. Right. So, was there anything you were talking about, the, the, both of the categories, amateur and professional, together? Is there anything you wanted to add on the professional category before telling us a little bit about the winning piece? It's uh, interesting that uh, the professional category also talks about solar energy, but it um, about renewable uh, energy, but it talks much more than that. And um, uh, the writer is a very good uh, uh, storyteller, and um, he, he he shows us how children ha have to uh, study with torchlights, and um, and they. And uh, the batteries are very expensive, so they have to the, uh, have to go cut wood in the jungle in order to earn money to buy expensive batteries. Um, but when the solar energy comes to the village, things change. But it doesn't the the energy doesn't mean um, electricity. Uh, the writer uh, shows us how how it brings uh, more education opportunities for children, and that means less dropouts, and that means less unwed uh, young girls and more trees. Okay. You, could, you could do an exam on that article. I think you have memorized that whole <laughs> thing in your sleep. You see, just saying, she set the bar quite high, so I hope to hear some good things from you. The rest of the jury, come here, because we need to make the announcement. Now, this gentleman will actually be coming straight away because we don't have a video, but please, could you announce the winner of the professional category for Africa, please? And the winner is... Daniel Ade. Daniel Ade, welcome. More clapping. Sorry, don't think you can stop because you can't. Ok, Daniel, vous avez quelques moments. Vous n'étiez pas dans un vidéo, vous n'étiez pas là à l'heure, vous n'étiez pas refusé d'être. Je, je sais, mais euh, qu'est-ce que vous voulez dire Comment, comment vous sentez-vous Pourquoi est-ce que c'est important de gagner ce prix Oui, je voudrais dire que c'est important. Parce... Bon, d'abord, bonsoir à tous et merci d'abord à la Commission européenne, de l'Union européenne, d'avoir organisé une telle initiative. Et comme l'a dit Madame Laju, c'est vraiment important de se focaliser sur ces sujets que nous avons abordés au cours de, de ce concours, particulièrement les énergies renouvelables. Euh, le sujet que j'ai traité portait sur des enfants qui au lieu, n'avaient pas d'électricité dans le village. Donc, pour euh, étudier, ils étaient obligés d'aller dans la brousse, couper le, le bois de brousse, aller le revendre et acheter des piles pour étudier le soir. Et l'histoire m'a vraiment touché. Et donc, j'ai voulu écrire cet article pour attirer l'attention de nos dirigeants, qu'il y a beaucoup à faire, que l'énergie renouvelable aussi peut changer la vie de ces enfants, améliorer les qualités d'éducation. Merci. Okay, merci beaucoup. Well done. 
Thank you all. One last photo, I think, of the three of you, and then I will release you to your seats. So. It's what you will, yeah, you're good, Jimmy? We don't mind, oh, and you? Okay, I should check with you as well. So, thank you very much, you may take your seats. We will move on to the next category. It is true, I am afraid, ladies and gentlemen, the clapping will be excessive, but that's the deal, because there isn't any kind of lounge music or jazz music or any drum rolls, so your clapping will fill that space. So I hope that's okay. You will not need to go to the gym after this ceremony, it is clear. So, thank you very much, and well done to those in the first category, and thank you for your words. Let's move on to the second region, which is the Arab world and the Middle East. Now, this regional category drew 17 entries, and the jury, and it was the jury, actually decided to select just one winner. And the winner was in the professional category simply because the submissions in the amateur category did not quite meet the strict criteria of the prize. So now, to hand out the trophy, I've got another jury member. Can I please welcome Alana Rizzo, board member of the Brazilian Association of Investigative Journalism. Can you give a very warm welcome to this lovely lady, please? I ah, see, you've learned, you've gone around that side. Hello, very nice to see you. So, um, the same thing, I'm not going to give you the envelope yet. I'd just like to have a feel, please, for the applications, if you can tell our audience in the professional category, and then a little bit of a teaser, why this winning piece? I'd like to thank the opportunity to be part of the jury. It was really interesting to read and to watch, to see all the articles and the work produced all over the world. It's really interesting for me, having the perspective of a Brazilian journalist, for example, to read the, and right now to give the award for the Arabic world and Middle East. We had really good, good articles in the specific, we had in the specific uh, category. category. And the winner tackles an issue that it's really important for me because it's empowering women. So it was really interesting to see how the Arabic world and the journalists are tackling this issue. And the good thing about this article, it has a really optimistic view that it's really important and necessary nowadays. So I think this was a, a, an, a, an, imp an important work to give voice for, from women from the Arabic world. You say that with a degree of surprise and relief, <laughs> an optimistic view. Yes, so. the, the, uh, the, uh, this work specific has a, an optimistic view that I think it's more than necessary for women right now. Okay, so this is yours. <laughs> Tudun, please announce the, in the Arab and the Middle East region, please announce the winner of the professional category. And the winner is Nehao El, El Sheriff. Sorry if I said it wrong. <laughs> Have the video, please. <laughs> joined uh, an informal savings group called the Village Savings and Loan Association. The group provides them with the opportunity to save money, but also financial advice, loans, and it's dependent on the trust in these small communities because if they are late on repayment or are facing any problems, the women support each other and they give them extra time, unlike banks. It's not just another initiative. It did change the way they are looking at their own lives and the community around them. Welcome, Nahal. I'm doing whi whistling. Well done. Come and join me. You may stick. Could just come and join me. I mean, kind of staggering, I suppose, that we still have to bring these issues to the fore so much. Yours was an audio piece. So just tell me a little bit how you feel, why you picked that in a, in a couple of words. Thank you. Well, first, thank you so much for this. Um, thanks to the EU, family, friends, and mentors. Um, I think it's, it's an important story, and I'm so happy this particular story got a prize because it highlights how when given a chance and very little guiding, women can actually change their own lives and the people around them. And um, the, the initiative is not something new, but the fact that they got some guiding from NGOs and international organizations, they 
became entrepreneurs and they moved from being jobless mothers to people who have their own businesses, they provided jobs for their families and neighbors. And it might not be a unique idea or an app-based initiative or project. It's, it might be just selling vegetables, but it made great changes to their lives and their children. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And Thank do you feel very, are you going to put it somewhere very obvious and polish it? Good, polish it daily and don't leave it around afterwards because somebody will nick it. Okay, very big round of applause. Thank you. So, you took your seat. I didn't see you go. I was so busy listening. So, next up, Asia and the Pacific. Now, this regional category drew a total of 62 entries, 30 professional and 32 amateur. And to hand out these trophies, can you please give a very warm welcome to Nazila Ganea, who is Associate Professor of International Human Rights Law at the University of Oxford. <laughs> welcome. So... Madame, or Mademoiselle, I like being called Mademoiselle, but nobody does anymore, which is very, very sad. You know the drill. So, first of all, no saying who it is, but a little bit about, you know, the applications, a little bit about that, and then about uh, the winner. A little bit of a teaser about the winner in the amateur category. Well, I think I'm speaking on behalf of most of the jury members when I say this was our favourite category. It took a lot of vibrant discussion, a lot of coffee breaks, and a lot of, uh, uh, you know interacting and brainstorming because they were they were really of a high standard. Um, so after much deliberation um, in the amateur category uh, the story we've awarded addresses something a bit different. It addresses an organization and we know how important organizations are in this field and we were touched by the story because it talks about how the organization with you know, a number of uh, sources, it talks about how the organization empowers members. Mm -hmm. So we, we said uh, it was deserving of this award and I'm delighted to be here to award the winner. So no fights amongst the jury? No, no, no. All very civilized with tea and gin. Very good, okay. So that one is yours. Could you please make the announcement? It is in your hands. The winner in the amateur category is... Umar Shah. Have the video. <laughs> uh, my work is about uh, those children who are born with uh, mental or physical disabilities in the most poorest families of the state. And it's also about those children who are crippled or maimed um, by the ongoing conflict between India and Pakistan. It's about those children and how do they survive and how their families struggle to get them treated. The reason behind uh, attending the Lorenzo Natali Media Prize is that uh, it gives voice to the most uh, poorest and the vulnerable communities around the world. It is uh, about people and not politics, and it's about strength, and it is not about power at all. Come to the stage, please. Now, if any of you had eagle eyes and saw the word professional or before that video, it is the amateur category. There has to be one secret technical error put in, and that was it. So go ahead. More rounds of applause, please, for this. Uh... Come. This is your moment to do the Gwyneth Paltrow. Please. Do you need to ask me anything? I don't need to ask you anything. I'm just, I mean, uh, come. How... how is this, is this the first prize you've won? Is it very important? Even if it's not the first prize, why is it important? How are you feeling about this win? I hope you're happy. Definitely, I'm happy. Okay. <laughs> there are no two opinions about it. Okay. So uh, I'm really much thankful to the European Union and uh, to my teachers who have taught me journalism and uh, to all my friends who have always encouraged and inspired me, uh, to my family, to my mom, to my father, to my Sadaf, to my Afan, to my Samu, and to everybody who has been associated with me. So thank you so much. It means a lot. And may we be coming again after two years. That's thank a lovely you. speech. Did you say everybody associated with me? Yeah. That was wonderful. Thank you very much. You may take your seat and you stay with me, please. I'm, I'm not actually going to make you stand here while we do the second, do the second category. I'm going to have a nice seat because you must be feeling a bit nerve-wracked. Okay, so come. Talk to me. So now we move on to the professional. 
category. Anything extra you wanted to add on that? And also, obviously, about the winning piece. Tell us more. We were very touched by this story. It showed great sensitivity. It talked about the daily grind of, uh, of this issue. And although, there, as I said, there was a lot of competition in the Asian Pacific category, and we had a hard decision to make, but this, we kept coming back to this story, and we just couldn't forget the storyline. So uh, I think it was remarkable, uh, and you'll soon know why. Okay. That's interesting. I like that. You said we kept coming back to this story. That's, that's really nice. Can you announce the winner, please? Mr. Saurabh Sharma. Oh, yeah. <gasps> Video, please. I saw you. <laughs> the main message I wanted to share with my piece was about the personal hygiene of girls across India living on the streets. Talking about menstrual hygiene in India, in India is still a taboo. Girls who, had, who have hit the puberty usually do not speak about periods, menstrual cycle openly. The girls who are living on the streets, they face many challenges. There is no toilets for them when there are not sufficient resources like sanitary napkins and other things. And we came up with this story. Thank you. Come to the stage, please. Please hand over the trophy in the professional category. Are you good? Yeah? You good, Jimmy? Okay, come and join me a moment, please. Just, I mean, what, uh, what, come, just because we need to hear you, otherwise we really won't hear you at the back. Do you want me to hold that? Because God forbid that breaks. Um, what made you, why did you tackle that story? And how, how, how does it feel winning this award? Come close to the mic, just tell our audience. I'm very delighted you. and happy to receive this award. To do this story, this was not at all easy. It took me more than a week to complete this story because uh, it's very hard to find a girl who's living on the street and who can openly, up, openly speak up on the issues of menstrual hygiene and other things. So this was a bit difficult task for me. I did. And I'm very happy. I would like to thank Judy, European Commission, my parents, my girlfriend, 101 reporters, and Ganga. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just come back with us. Just come back. Yeah, you have to do more clapping. Let's just quickly have a photo with both of you, please. Oh, it's bring your trophy. Bring your trophy. Come on, no desultory clapping. You're just going to have red palms. Okay. All right. Thank you very, very much. Really interesting, really interesting to see the huge diversity in terms of the subject matter that is tackled and the ways in which it's tackled. And I can tell you from reading them the styles and the different formats. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are almost halfway through proceedings. Are you all still in fine form? Are you all still happy to clap like maniacs? Please just don't go home tonight and say, oh my God, that woman, she just kept telling us to clap. Well, that's just the way it is. Next, we have the Europe region. Now, this regional category drew 93 entries, of which 56 were from the professional journalists and 37 from the amateurs. And to hand out the trophies, can you please put your hands together again for Richard Jones of DevEx. Thank you very much. Hello, how are you? Very well, thanks. Good. A gentleman of the jury. You were outnumbered. I was. Was it civil, all of it, as was, has been said? No it was a very 50? civil partnership. Yeah. It's, okay. So, you know the drill. Tell me a little bit yep. about the amateur applications and tell me, without revealing the winner yet, what, what was it about the winning piece that made it stand out? Sure. Well, thanks, thanks, Katrina. And I'm delighted to have been asked again to represent DevEx and take part as a, a jury in this really important initiative. I think as you've as you've already mentioned, there was a lot of healthy deliberations among the jury about uh, the European category in both um, professional and amateur categories. But we're really happy with the decision that we've come to and, of course, with the winners that we'll unveil this evening. So in the Europe amateur category, we've gone for a piece that gives a rather harrowing account of the 
child victims of the ongoing Syrian conflict. This conflict is, of course, one of the most troubling and protracted crises of our time. We felt that this piece really gave us an inside track on how issues such as homelessness, migration, ch uh, child labor, um, and the lack of education um, are all really interconnected. Um, we also appreciated the sensitive style of, of the interviews and the thorough research that had gone into producing this piece in order to sort of go beyond the mainstream narrative. Um, overall, we felt that it was an excellent example of amateur writing at its best and should encourage everyone out there to have their say, to tell their stories, and to really make their voices heard on the issues that matter most to our development community. Okay, thank, you. thank you. So it really did tick quite a lot of the boxes yeah, of all absolutely. of those diverse criteria. Absolutely. So it remains for you. you. Oh, it's open. You can't pretend okay. to unstick it. <laughs> So the winner is in the amateur category for Europe. And the winner is Maria Garcia Zornosa. Video, please. <laughs> two months living side by side with Syrian children. They were telling me all the stories. And I knew, and I, since the very beginning, I had the feeling that I had to do something for them. So what could I do? I could do the best I can do in my life, I think, which is journalism. It's a prize about them, and it's their prize. And I want, with this hour, their voice to, to be here all around the world. We are based on solidarity and humanity and democracy, and we have to export them these values, and we have to make these principles valuable outside of our borders and with the refugee crisis. Welcome. Should you stay there if you come and join me for a moment? Um, yes, so we, we learnt a little bit there about why you said, what can I do? Um, Richard said it was really a harrowing story. So how did you handle that? Did, was it helpful for you to tell that story? What, how did you feel about yeah. that? You know, uh, when I was going to Turkey as a volunteer, my mother used to ask me, why do you go there, Maria? Do you think you're going to change the world? It took me some time to realize that I didn't go to change the world. Actually, I couldn't, I wish. But it also took me some time to, to see that all of us doing small things can do this place a better place to live in. I'm always taking with me this lecture by um, Kapuczynski, to be a good journalist, you need to be a good person. I think uh, Lorenzo Natalie Award so that the world is full of uh, committed and uh, good people and good journalism. I would like to tell you just a sorry story about Ahmed. Uh, he was a refugee Syrian children living in Turkey. He was five years old at that time. And uh, one day he just stopped coming to these activities with the volunteers were preparing. And a uh, time later we hear that he was a new sister. So he had to go to the streets to, to sell random food, random tissues, random chocolate in order to help their parents to live and to have something for his, his sister, for his sister to eat. So I think we have to remember that not so many years ago we were the refugees. Actually, my family fled to Netherlands after the civil war in Syria. And also, I, I would like to emphasize that uh, refugees don't want and don't deserve only our charity. They want our opportunities, and we sometimes are uh, rejecting them to them. So this is for Ahmed, Hamza, Fatima, and all my Syrian children. Thank you so much. Shukran. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your very valuable comments. Thank you very much. You are oh, good. If you're happy to stay there being smiley, I'm very happy for you to be there. So, professionals. Tell me um, about them and about the winning piece. Well, Katrina, again, in this uh, category, there were some really excellent submissions, um, but there was one piece that really resonated among all of our um, jury, and I'd encourage you all to read it after this uh, ceremony. It's a really, really well-written piece um, with report 
findings brought to life through some analysis, insightful analysis, and original reporting um, on, on what really in the development community is an underreported supply chain issue. Um, we really felt that the level of investigation was, was particularly high, and we appreciated this nice interplay and mix of statistics and, and personal stories. Mm -hmm. Overall, we thought it was well-rounded, it was a worthy winner in the category, and I hope that the issues tackled in this piece around child labor and exploitation will spur action in Brussels and beyond, and that, I think, would really show the power of, of good journalism in action. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're being clapped. Well, you're so, being clapped for your comment. So, and the winner is Peter Lint. Well done. Video, please. <laughs>me as a journalist um, is to inform people about the truth about products they consume, politicians they vote for, the things that we might not think about um, as being part of a bigger system, for example vanilla from Madagascar. I found out that the vanilla industry is very soured by child labor. Um, vanilla farmers are very poor um, and when you tell them what a vanilla pod sells for in Europe, um, these people who eat leaf soup and chew on roots to keep their children fed are quite shocked. There are many, many links in vanilla production. And the final link, the vanilla farmer who lives in very remote places and has no way of knowing what they could be earning, is not getting the, uh, a lot of the profit. That is very, very short. Welcome. Come to the stage. You're good? Come. So the same, the same question to you, really. I mean, you're very clear there about, about how you feel about it, but how did you come upon that story? Why did you write about that? Well, um, I think I should start by saying thank you to Dan Watch, who originally introduced me to the story and who hired me originally as a freelancer, and then I wrote the story for others, other media as well. Um, but um, excuse me, I've actually written down because there's Do you important need me to points. Hold the award? Nice. I get to hold all these thank awards. You. Yeah, voilà. you thank are. you. I'm not called Presenter Peter, but there the, we go. Uh, I am now. Yeah, I'd like to um, especially thank uh, Julia Hansen at Danwatch for incredibly editing and support. I'd like to thank uh, Annie Kelly at The Guardian for very good editing as well. I'd like to thank the European Commission for the prize and for hosting this incredibly important award. Um, and just to touch upon the story itself, in Madagascar, hours of flying and driving on very, very bumpy roads, there are voiceless people. Um, they need for you, they need for all of us to make at least informed decisions. Um, that is in buying products, supporting businesses, politicians and systems. And we all need to remember that. What people do with information is, uh, it's not up to me, but prices like this, um, it enables the voiceless, it gives them a voice. There are thousands of untold stories out there and they need to be told. Politicians, they need to answer the allegation and charges. Companies need to answer to the law. And when authorities fail in stepping in and doing so, we as journalists must hold them responsible. We must give voice to the voiceless, otherwise we are failing. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Again, again, you may go. Have a, have a, go and have a nice photo with the three. Thank you. Can we just take a photo with... She has got the loveliest smile. She's been standing there smiling for at least five minutes. Thank you. Please take your seats. And thank you very much for your comments. It's hugely important also to use events like this as a platform to say those very important things, because you're right. You can sort of lead a horse to water. You can't make it drink. And communication and action among every single, every single person is, is, is crucial. And uh, what you do is the start of that is a is the tip of an iceberg, so thank you very much. So we are now going to move on to the last of our regions, Latin America and the Caribbean. This category drew a total of 55 entries, 34 professional and 21 amateur, and the jury 
also in this um, regional category only awarded a prize in the amateur category. The submissions in the professional category didn't quite pass muster, not, not quite up to the very strict criteria that I listed earlier. Um, to hand out the trophy, I'd like to welcome back Alana Rizzo, board member of the Brazilian Association of Investigative Journalism. Please give her a warm welcome again. Thank you. Hello, lovely lady. Nice to see you. So, tell me, tell me about this, you know, the, the uh, entries in general in this category and tell me a little bit of a teaser about the winning piece. It's good to present uh, the award for Latin America. Uh, as I told before, I'm from Brazil and it's a region full of challenges. So it's really important. I would like to encourage more journalists from Latin America uh, to write uh, and to produce material for the, for, for the award. Uh, this is specific, uh, the winner uh, uh, for the amateur uh, category, uh, there's two things that I think is really important in, in, this, uh, in, in this specific work. First, because there's a innovative storytelling, and right now it's another challenge for us journalists, how we're gonna tell stories, because we need people engaged, we want people to read our, our material, no? So the, the winner did that. So it's not only a, it, it gets like a, it's a interactive, interactive, there's a video, there is uh, different types of, uh, of, of storytelling in this material. And the other thing that I think is really important in, this, uh, in, the winner, in the winner piece is because it takes a really important role of the media, that's the media like a watchdog. Mm -hmm. So this specific uh, material, Goes, uh, goes around the importance of uh, how we need to, to, to look at government, politicians, and business. And it tackles a really important issue that it's slavery. Okay, so you're echoing a theme and themes that have already come up today. Yes. So, can you please announce the yes. winner? Thank you. Thank you. In the amateur category. And the winner is Fernanda Maldonado Mocelin. <laughs> an illusion uh, that poverty happens only in the north part and in the northern part of the country. Uh, we wanted to show that in the south part we have uh, poverty too. We wanted to put the modern day slavery in Brazil in a spotlight of discussion because we think that talking about this problem uh, it helps to press the government and uh, denunciate, report crimes against the human rights. Maybe uh, that way we can help people who are uh, voiceless. Welcome. More clapping. Thank you. <laughs> Come. So, we heard there about um, different kinds of formats, yes. different kinds of storytelling. How did that come about? Yeah, uh, we, uh, first of all, good night, uh, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, sorry. Otherwise, they're going to go yeah, home and leave course. you here. Good night, <laughs> bye. Good night, good night. <laughs> um, well, we, we've made a web documentary uh, financed by crowdfunding. So okay. we are independent journalists. We work in uh, five people in, the, uh, in our team. Uh, and we look for uh, changing the, the way to tell a story. So we use uh, many different um, uh, pieces formats of formats in journalism yeah. to, to tell a story, mm -hmm. uh, which is about modern day slavery in the countryside of Paraná, okay. uh, a state in Brazil. Okay. So. Uh, you want me to hold well, that? Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank okay. You. They all have very different methods. Of the, th yes. This is this is kind of <laughs> this is hotel paper. He had something yes, similar. It's, it's all very different. <laughs> yeah, go on. Well, uh, I just want to say that this year uh, Brazil completes 130 uh, years since the abolition of the slavery. Uh, some things have changed, but uh, the slavery in our country have never been uh, truly ended. Uh, thousands of people are victims of social inequality and 
are present uh, in the greater world situations. So we as, as journalists and civil society too, uh, we must show and discuss about uh, modern day slavery and many other social issues. Uh, we must press the government and we must try to change those realities. Uh, I'm thankful for the European, European Commission, for the jury and for the people who work with me in this project. That's it, thank you. Thank you, well done to you. Congratulations, look after it. Please take your seat. Thank you very much. Okay, so you know that this year there's a special prize. Uh, it's, a, it's a whole new category for journalistic pieces submitted on the theme of freedom of religion or belief outside the European Union, because although that is the fundamental right of every human being, it is still very, very channel challenged in many parts of the world. Just to be clear, the submissions for this theme could include inspiring stories or actions relating to the promotion of freedom of religion or belief, as well as respect for religious diversity and interreligious cooperation. That was the kinds of topics that people could write about. In fact, what's really interesting is more than 20% of the total prize applications were actually submitted in this category. The strict criteria I mentioned earlier, they were applied in the same. I think there was a slightly smaller jury, is that right? There were about five of you deliberating in this case. But it's not for me to tell you more. It's for the gentleman who was appointed by President Juncker in uh, 2016 as special envoy for the promotion of freedom of religion or belief outside the European Union. I'm very delighted to welcome to the stage Jan Figel. Please join me, sir. Hello. So. Tell us a little bit about, you might need to put these up now, I think. Yeah, yeah you're up there with me. Right. Tell us a little bit more about this special category, or about your job. How yeah. did this category come about? Everybody is special, and everywhere. And everybody has the same dignity. And I think this category speaks a bit about the special, essential value, which I, I would like to address in a few sentences. Distinguished uh, Commissioner and Director General, members of the jury, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, a year ago I was uh, nominated by the Commission and President Juncker to be the first ever EU special envoy on FORP, as we say in uh, short, freedom of religion or belief outside the European Union. Um, this is very important, uh, essential uh, value and right, because uh, this is respected. Uh, also other freedoms, civil and political, uh, are respected and promoted. If this is missing or oppressed, then we see the similar uh, realities in societies. So it's very important. And my presence here after a year uh, with the renewed mandate and also this special prize, first time after 25 years, speaks by itself about importance and trust. So I'm very glad that media journalists, whether professional or amateur, are so eager that in short time, as you mentioned, have been able to, to table uh, so many uh, submissions. It speaks by itself that this was either missing or is becoming uh, one of important parts of, of storytelling. And media have an unreplaceable role in awareness raising, in building free society, but not only free, but responsible. And here I am also grateful that uh, media have been able to show uh, a lot of examples and stories and to expose what happens in the world because uh, the, the restrictions on freedom of religion or belief are from the level of uh, intolerance through discrimination to persecution and even genocide, genocidal situations. And many journalists with courage and with a lot of uh, risks, they go and publish and present and film or record stories of people. I will mention just a few of them, which you may know, and I am sure it's good to know, like Yazidi Sakharov Prize winners, uh, Nadia Murad and Lamia Bashar, which is now part of European Union, uh, not only award history, but commitment to help such people, to give voice to voiceless or defend defenseless. Uh, Maryam Ibrahim from Sudan, or founder of the Atheist Agnostic Alliance Pakistan, Fawzia, uh, Fawzia Ilias, or Asia Bibi from that country. 
So I want to conclude this special entry or contribution by applauding to all those who have courage and understand the importance of freedom of thought, freedom of conscience, freedom to believe or not to believe, but freedom of conviction as civilizational issue. And also those who promote freedom with responsibility because only responsible freedom is sustainable freedom. Thank you. Thank you all. The amateur category comes first. Is there anything that you wanted to say about the winning piece for this? Yes, I have a few comments from yeah. the jury. Uh, it also speaks about the complex uh, or complexity of the overall category because, as, as you mentioned, almost 100 applications mm -hmm. means a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the amateur, the best, uh, uh, represents African case from uh, Burkina, Burkina Faso and speaks about coexistence and living together between Muslims and Christians in the category, in the ca a country which was uh, traditionally very tolerant, peaceful, and now is challenged, attacked by the extremists. Mm -hmm. It speaks about the village which is close to uh, Mali, to the borders with Mali, it's Loroni, uh, where one church and many mosques exist, but uh, population, uh, lives not only in peace but also in commitment to show their examples within the Burkina Faso but also beyond. Mm -hmm. It's a very nice story. Okay, thank you. Thank Would you, you like to announce the winner in the oh, amateur yeah. category? Thank That's you very much. part of my duty and uh, noble obligation. The name of the uh, winner is Usman Drabo. <laughs> Ils ont une certaine vision, ils ont une perception de la religion parce qu'aujourd'hui, quand tu es musulman, quand tu es chrétien, d'autres pensent qu'on n'a pas le droit à, voilà, à collaborer avec d'autres confessions religieuses. Mais les habitants de l'Ouro ont compris que le plus important, c'est la relation humaine, c'est la valeur humaine. Et si on arrive à garder cette relation humaine, cette valeur humaine, ça permet de consolider la société. C'est de porter cette valeur à ce message, non seulement dans les autres parties du Burkina Faso, mais ensuite dans le reste du monde. Please come to the stage. Félicitations. Merci beaucoup. On a parlé, je vais juste faire ça parce que lui, il est très grand. Donc, voilà. Et c'est important qu'on okay. peut vous écouter. Waouh wow. Parce que finalement, 100 articles, ils ont reçu. Et euh, vous êtes euh, une de deux personnes, deux individus qui, euh, qui a gagné. Comment, pourquoi oui, euh, pourquoi c'est tellement important et comment tu as découvert ce sujet-là Pourquoi vous avez choisi ce sujet Alors, merci à... <coughs> Excusez, merci à toutes et à tous. Euh, merci à la Commission de l'Union européenne. Merci aussi à justement la population de Loroni. Loroni, c'est un village qui est situé à, à la frontière du Mali, Burkina Faso. Et elle est, il est spécifiquement situé dans une zone qui est très menacée et, par le terrorisme. Et c'est justement à la suite de l'attentat, le premier attentat terroriste que le Burkina a connu en 2015. Il a commencé à avoir une sorte de stigmatisation, une sorte de division entre les habitants euh, de la capitale à Ouagadougou et dans d'autres régions du Burkina. C'est qui m'a encore tiqué parce que euh, le Burkina n'avait jamais connu ce genre de situation. Et une fois, j'ai entendu parler de l'Oroni, où les habitants vivent en parfaite harmonie. 80% des musulmans, une minorité chrétienne et aussi des, des non-croyants, mais qui qui se donnent la main, qui vivent ensemble euh, sans problème. La fête musulmane, c'est la fête des chrétiens. Une fête chrétienne, c'est la fête de toute la population de l'Oroni. Et il y a une seule école et catholique, Rosa Molas, où il y a plein, plein d'élèves musulmans qui, qui vont dans cette école, qui prient ensemble. Et, voilà. et euh, lorsqu'il y a une activité dans, 
dans les églises, il y a l'association des femmes musulmanes, il y a l'association des musulmans qui se mobilisent pour aller aider les frères chrétiens. Et, ouais, je, je pensais que cette histoire émouvante peut inspirer voilà, une partie euh, des régions du Burkina et pourquoi pas le reste du monde euh, voilà, pour vivre dans une, une paix durable. Et, voilà. Tout à fait, c'est comme une utopie. Malheureusement, il faut utiliser ce nom même, utopie. Magnifique, merci beaucoup pour avoir décrit. Est-ce que vous pouvez rester sur place avec okay, nous merci. pour qu'on peut faire le, la, catégorie, la catégorie professionnelle Merci et félicitations. On peut applaudir quand même, s'il vous plaît. Donc, the professional yeah. category. Can you say something that the jury have told you about the winning piece? The professional category is also linked to the same continent, but to the north. We call this region MENA, Middle East and North Africa. It's linked, uh, as it sounds a bit, unfortunately, to, to the ongoing conflicts in those societies. Conflicts, uh, violence, uh, insecurity, and especially young people Uh, in one of these countries react uh, by decision to, to flee the country and to find uh, the new home in Europe because of their conviction. Their conviction, which is non-religious, which is atheist, was not respected and they have been persecuted and suffering in the, in the country. So, of course, I suppose that the winner will t tell more about uh, the story and, and, and future, and I'm happy to announce the name and the, uh, and the winner is Delphine Bauer Delphine work on uh, Sabri and Sami. They are a couple coming from Tunisia and they escaped from Tunisia because of their uh, atheism. That was a problem in Tunisia. They wanted to be free, not to believe in God. Here in Europe, we have the chance to be able to say that we are a taste or that we are believers and it's not the case everywhere. It's a question of human rights, it's a question of, of dignity and it's a question of, um, of uh, be free really to live their life the way they want. Welcome. Come, 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 come. Have you got... Stay this way. Stay just so that you can have your two shots. Just a little. Just uh, let them have them uh, ensemble. Et puis je vais vous inviter. Okay, un moment. On peut applaudir quand même. Et je vais faire après. I will do the photo afterwards. Let me just hear from you, lovely lady. So tell us about. You know. How very delighted and I hope yes. and uh, how did you come to write about that in mm -hmm. a few words I'm very delighted uh, first of it because it's my first prize and I'm a journalist always wants to get some recognition from that uh, sector it's complicated to uh, be a freelance journalist so it really matters for me uh, thank you so much for this award for uh, paying attention to my work and especially because that's a story that I've been done for the last few years so it's something which is a long-term story it's uh, about uh, two young people that became friends of mine and I Um, I have seen them in so complicated situation, living in poverty, uh, not knowing what will be their future. They have been to Serbia and then they had to cross illegally borders to finally uh, land in, pa in, in Paris, in France. So I know all about their trip and their very complicated journey just because they want to be free, not to believe in God. And I, I, I think it's amazing because we in Europe are totally free not to believe or to believe, and that's something that seems to be obvious, but for them it's not. And so they're real fighters. I never seen so uh, passionate people. Uh, so I'm very proud to get that prize, especially for them. It's, uh, I want to, to dedicate that prize to uh, Sabrina and Sami, of course. Thank you very much. Well Thank you, that's for you. If the three of you can have a photo together. Well done, very, very well done. Okay, you may take your seats. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Mr. Jan Figuel. So, 
Um, it's a privilege to be up here because really there you can feel it, right? Their, their excitement is, is absolutely palpable. And uh, I wish I could talk to you all day and I'm sorry I can't, but I really want to get, make sure these good people stay with us to the end because we are on the home straight. But please do uh, stay with us, audience, um, because this is a fabulous prize and it's well worth being here with us and you two at home, whatever you're doing. So we are fast approaching uh, the end of the event, so for those of you who need some alcohol and some food, you should be able to get some very, very soon, and of course some good conversation, that's most important. The thing that stands between us and that ending is simply the grand prize. And here to do the honours of announcing the winner, I'm very, very delighted to be able to welcome to the stage the EU Commissioner for International Cooperation and Development, Neven Mimitsa. Welcome, sir. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you I don't know whether you need that up a bit. You man. Thank you. Well, very good evening, dear ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor for me to be with you today and to present the winner of uh, this year's grand prize. A famous American journalist of last century, Dorothy Thompson, one said that there is nothing to fear except the persistent refusal to find out the truth. I can only agree to the invaluable and irreplaceable role of journalism in the world. And as you have seen, all of our winners here tonight represent the very best that journalism has to offer. Men and women, amateurs and professionals, masters of the spoken, written, and visual arts, from Burkina Faso to Brazil, and from Turkey to Tunisia. They tell the tale of some of today's most challenging issues, from child labor and modern slavery, to religious persecution, poverty, and conflict. Their stories bring these issues to life and to the attention of the global community by encouraging us all to think about the human impact and to spend just a moment in the shoes of those who walk these difficult paths every minute of, uh, of every day. But their stories also tell of great strengths, resilience, and reasons to be hopeful. They show how, innova uh, how innovation and inspiration have the potential to transform lives. From shining a light on using solar to help students stay longer and perform better in schools, to using traditional forms of money sharing to empower women, build businesses, and transform lives. From among these incredible entries, the jury selected a single grand prize winner on the basis of their relevance, quality, and investigative depth and originality. For me, this entry highlights one of the most important challenges, but also opportunities of our time. So, before announcing the winner, the winner, may I thank the author from the bottom of my heart for giving a voice to Shano and so many girls around the world in similar or even more precarious positions. It is simply unacceptable that today 250 million girls still live in poverty. 120 million girls worldwide have experienced sexual violence and over 60 million girls are out of school. From the streets of Varanasi to the corridors of Brussels, we all have a responsibility to speak out against one of the greatest injustices of our time. We must all work together to ensure a better future for girls like Shano, a life of dignity, of safety, and of opportunity, where she can fulfill her dreams of becoming a teacher. Thank you everyone who participated in this year's award, and to the many other reporters like you, who are helping to give a voice, a face, and a hope to those who need it the most. So, it's well, time. 
If you want to, to do the envelope to opening the thing, the, there you, you go. Okay, let's see. So, this year's grand prize of Lorenzo Natali goes to Saurabh Sharma. Thank you. Just for a moment, do you want to? Uh, I've thanked everyone in my life. You've thanked everybody that you could possibly thank. Um, ha yeah, you, that was I'm very. I'm with this award. I'm very much happy, and I'm unable to speak anything. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, parents. Thank you, everyone, for supporting me, and thank you to my teachers also who taught me so well. Thank you, Abhishek well sir. Done. Thank you. You may both take your seats. I will. You may stay with me or take your seat as you wish. I'm okay. just going to do the closing, the closing, closing. What was so absolutely, thank you very much, Commissioner. What was so delightful there was, was, was when that slowly dawned on his, he was sort of looking around a bit puzzled. Did, did I write about that person? Oh, yeah, it was me. <laughs> sort of, uh, it was very, very dear, very, very lovely to see. So, and, and, and I, I just quote the jury, actually, on, 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 uh, on his piece. said, uh, you remember the story. It stays with you. There is great sensitivity within it, which, of course, is the absolute value of good journalism. And it discusses gender in a gentle way, resulting in a very original piece. So, be proud, sir. And uh, I'm sure everybody you thanked will be equally proud. So, you can all take a deep breath now release any tension over a glass of something cold. I would just like to do the thank yous. That's my job. Uh, of course, to EU Commissioner Nevin Mimitsa, Director General uh, Stefano Mansovici, Special Envoy, Jan Figel, our talented winners, our esteemed jury members. I, hear, I keep thinking, oh God, what other words? Talented, esteemed, but I really do mean those words. Our journalism schools, our lovely interpreters don't know how they do it. That is a feat in itself. Our technicians, thank you very much. My lovely assistants, that sounds terribly sexist, but you were a brilliant assistant, thank you. I couldn't have do done that without you. And of course, the European Commission, Directorate General for International Cooperation and Development, without whom these awards just simply wouldn't be happening. Um, I do say a heartfelt thank you to all of our audience for sticking with us. It's, it's hard at the end of a long day and for being bossed around by me and being told to clap every five milliseconds. So I'm very, very grateful. I've really, really enjoyed being with you this evening and celebrating what I say, the artists that you are. You are artists, and I greatly respect your intellect and your passion and your courage and your tenacity in unearthing these unusual and, and taboo and sensitive subjects and, 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 and putting them, bringing them into the spotlight. Um, it must feel very good to get up in the morning and think, hmm, there's some integrity and some grit in what I do. And not least in an era where we've got increasingly fake news and increasingly screaming sensational headlines. So I do go back to what the Director General said. You know, stories, it's the essence of who we are. One thing I will add from what I've heard this evening is we've really heard the word responsibility. You talked about it, a lot of you talked about it, the Commissioner talked about it. It really is. I don't want to sound trite, but what they do is the tip of the iceberg. After that, there is a whole load of responsibility. So keep on writing, because I've had enough of gifts. I want some more words. Thank you very, very much. As a final curtain call, before you dash off, you're going to be coming here, winners, with your trophies, please, uh, to have a family photograph with, uh, with the gentleman we have here from the Commission. And from the rest of the lovely audience, you can get off your bums now, go and search for some food and some drink. I thank you very much, and I wish you a very, very safe trip home. Thank you. Good night. Awards come. So I'm not sure how they want to orchestrate you. How do you want them orchestrated? Here in two lines or one? 
two lines. Right, tall people at the back, les grands, à l'arrière, s'il vous plaît, les plus.